Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dork Side. I'm the Dork in the Road and it is part two of the enclosed trailer camper build and today putting down some e-tracks so we can put the bikes in here. I'm the Dork in the Road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. So on the last episode of the enclosed trailer build we painted it white as you can see the paint has held up for the three days it's been since we did that and looks great so really excited that we painted it. My goal here is to set it up to be a bike hauler first and a camper second and so with that in mind we're going to install some e-track today which is going to make it so I can haul my bikes. Uh, I have four motorcycles if you count my daughter's motorcycle and there's going to be times when I'm camping and riding with other people so I want to set it up so that we can haul two Africa twins for sure. So when I go to Giant Loop or something with Duck Fan or McLovin and we want to take the big bikes, I can do that. And if I get it set up for two Africa twins, then it'll work for basically any other setup because those are the biggest, widest, tallest bikes that I own, that anyone I know owns. So to that end, the most modular setup I'm aware of is the E-Track system. And my favorite E-Track system is the one from Ryder Cargo, which is a brand owned from Rocky Mountain ATV. So Rocky Mountain ATV was kind enough to sponsor this build. So they've sent me an E-Track kit with the track itself, a lot of the tie downs and mounts and stuff that go in the E-Track, some wheel chocks, spare tire mount, and uh, a shelf, a cool shelf for that I'm gonna put in here and a paper towel holder. So thanks to Rocky Mountain for sponsoring this build. I'll put links to everything I use in the description, but let me show you what the plan is for today and then we'll get started putting this E-Track in. So I messed around a little in here. I put the bikes in to kind of figure out what goes where and the best setup that I've come up with is two E-Track rails, one on each side. What I'm trying to do is work around the existing eye bolts that are here. You can see this one and there's one up front and these just happen to be the exact right length for me to do that without having to cut any E-Track. So I'm just gonna use two rails like this at the front. We wanna keep the weight of the bikes forward on the tongue and in front of the axle. This gives me the freedom and the modularity to set them up wherever I like. So I'm gonna start with this E-Track. So over here on this side, the eye bolt is far enough over that I can get the E-Track up next to it, no problem. But here it isn't, and that's a concern because you have to put the E-Track down into the trailer frame and the trailer frame is what this eye bolt is, is mounted to so i can't get these bolt holes down into the frame right there and still keep it over here to the side so i'm gonna have to lose this eye bolt i'll keep it so that if i want to replace it or move it over i can i don't really need the ones in the front because i have the e-track it's just nice to have extra tie down points if i want them let's crawl underneath the trailer it's right here 13 millimeter this is actually kind of loose i'm kind of surprised maybe it's good i'm taking it apart it's not all rusted shut though that's, a, that's advantageous that came off remarkably easy. It's almost concerningly easy. Oh, it's screwed in too. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, hear that noise? That's the noise we're gonna make when we put these self-tappers in. I can always put this back in. Actually, what if I, I can put it right back down through the E-Track. I might do that and then save it and then the hole is filled. That makes a lot of sense. I can't use the front notch, but I won't need to with the tie down up there. Look at this. If I do this, that could be even better. Go away, stupid rope. Ah, much better. And the thing about this is, since the hole is here and that's through the frame of the trailer, I know that these two will be lined up when I put the self-tapper down through. So, bonus, bonus. So to anchor this stuff, we're gonna use these two-inch self-drilling hex head screws for where it goes through the wood into the frame, and then just these wood screws for the rest of it where it just goes down into the plywood. It's worth noting that this trailer has a double plywood deck. There's a full inch of plywood before it gets down into the frame, which is why I went with the two inches. And the hard part is just locating the frame pieces underneath, but up front, I know it's right next to that eye bolt because that's where the eye bolt is drilled into. So I'm gonna just do the first two self tappers up there and then uh, we'll work our way down and make sure that we're putting the self drilling hex head screws anywhere there's a metal underneath and the plywood we're just doing these. Do this one first. I've been told over tightening is bad so I'm gonna try not to do that. Go in. Okay, not over tightening. That seems like it's through. Let's look underneath. The smaller one, that's it. So we got plenty of length. Okay, let's put the other one through. Poor little lithium drill. Just doesn't seem to have the oomph, the cordless one, to drive these self-tappers. So my neighbor Daryl's an awesome rock star and he loaned me this thing, corded. Cause I apparently don't have a corded one. I thought I did. So this, if this doesn't get it done, I'm doing something wrong, but I think I just don't have the power I need. I got two in, so that's a start. There it goes. In, that's all we needed, little upgrade. Let's 
See, this is why it's so important to get them off. There's two up there, two here, and two here, and that's it. That's all. The rest is gonna be wood screws because that's all I can get the supports into. So, had to get all the self tappers in. But now, wood screws for the other holes. That'll give us a little bit of extra rigidity and security. <laughs> Some people don't do these every place, but I'm paranoid, so I'm gonna put them in every hole so I have enough screws and it takes no time. Now the complicated part, because before I was just sort of eyeballing it, like reaching underneath and lining up the bolts, but now I'm past the point where I can do that. But the frame cross rails underneath are exactly two feet apart, so as long as I put this bolt in two feet from where I put that bolt in, we should be great. <laughs> Can't let it run or it'll snap the head right off. There we go. That's all there is for frame. The rest is wood screws. All done. Very sturdy. It's going nowhere. I've been cheating on this side because the door is here, so I can just reach up underneath and feel where the trailer frame is so I can make sure that the bolts are going down into it, self tappers. But I can't do that on the other side. But theoretically, the trailer is symmetrical, right? So as long as I get the front of this E-Track even with the other one, then all I have to do is mirror this pattern, but on the other side, and I should be able to get the same number of bolts in. We're gonna try that and I can just walk around and peek and make sure that they're actually going in. I gotta tell you, crawling around on your hands and knees, screwing things into very thick steel and plywood on a 90 degree day inside of a giant aluminum oven is hot, sweaty work. But worth it because the E-Track on the floor is done. Now, am I gonna do the wall today? And do I know exactly what I wanted on the wall? The answer to both of those is maybe. It's a resounding maybe. I would go as far as a resounding maybe. Got a couple other goodies to mount in here too, I mentioned. I got a spare tire holder, I gotta figure out how it works. So if you're not familiar with the E-Track system, let me show you why it's so cool and why I wanted it for this build. It's an O-ring tie down. They just pop into this track like that. And you have a secure mounting point anywhere you want along this track. But I also mentioned I want to put it on the wall. So you have to picture this is vertical, but this hook goes in the same deal. Hangs on the wall and you can hang your jacket or tie downs or whatever the hell you want from these. And it doesn't go anywhere. Pretty slick system. You can move the hook or the tie down up and down this anywhere you want. I think I'm gonna mount the spare directly in the center of the very front of the trailer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a wheel chalk over here, wheel chalk on this side, and then one slightly farther back over here. And then the spare tire is not in the way of either of those, but I don't have to move wheel chalk. It solves my spare tire problem, makes it easy to just carry one bike in here, but gives me the freedom and versatility to put two bikes in here when I want to. I have the wheel chalks, but I don't have the quick release things that I want for them. And those aren't gonna be in for a little bit. So I'm not gonna put those wheel chalks in until I get the quick release plates. At least not at this moment. I might change my mind and just screw them in. So I have them when I get to the point where I gotta carry two bikes. It only came with a few wood screws. So maybe I'll put some stuff tappers in instead at least for the top it just doesn't feel like it's going to be very sturdy but i guess i'll get it anchored in and see how it feels you're supposed to just put it in the wall i guess i'm gonna give it a shot tell me in the comments why it's dumb i mean worst case i pull four screws out and move the damn thing right but let's give it a shot i'm a lot less worried because it doesn't have to support the weight of the tire like it would if i had put it on the wall That's gonna be solid right there. I think I'm ready to start putting the E-Track on the walls. I got to thinking, what am I gonna use the E-Track for? And really it's for two things. One, uh, to hang stuff up on the wall, and two, to secure things to the wall. So that got me thinking about what I'm gonna secure to the wall most often, and um, at least back here, there's uh, some shorter things that have to get secured to the wall, like my water container and my cooler. What I think I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take one of these, they're not quite four feet, but I'm gonna call them four foot sections of E-Track. I'm gonna mount one right here in the back a foot off the ground and it's going to come up almost exactly to the end of this e-track so they won't interfere with each other but i'm gonna put it on the wall about a foot up it's exactly the right height to mount this water carrier my cooler here my chairs anything like that so anything short that i can mount it and secure it to the wall and i'm going to do that on both sides so i'm going to put another four foot section right here one foot off the ground so that i can secure all the smaller items lower items to the back of the trailer uh, but still they're off to the side so I can get at least one bike in and out easily with all that stuff there And there'll still be room in the middle to throw my cot down if I want to and then 
I've got two more sections of E-Track. I'm gonna put it almost all the way up to the top. So right below these lights, I think is where I'm gonna put it. And that way uh, I can use my hooks so I can hang gear or hang shelves. They make bins that you can go up here and that's gonna come to about here. So I'll have E-Track up close to the ceiling all the way to here. I am a little concerned. I bought three quarter inch self tappers for the wall cause I was real paranoid about them going all the way through. I think they might be too short. So I'm gonna try to put one or two in and see if they are, I'll go back and get some one inch ones. That's not a big deal. Let's try them and see how they feel before we worry about it too much. Fortunately, figuring out where the studs are is pretty easy on the walls because I've got these screws where the paneling is attached. These seem long enough. That's pretty sturdy with just one. So I'm okay with it. I think it's gonna work. Careful not to over tighten those. This trim piece has to get cut so that this will sit flush. So I gotta cut that out. First wall piece is done. Just hung my J hooks because they're fun to play with. But that's how they go in the E-Track. Interestingly, the holes didn't quite line up, but fortunately self tappers also self tap through E-Track. So I just moved the hole over a little, drilled it out. This is ugly and I should have painted behind it, but I don't care that much and uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. On the other side, I am gonna cut the trim piece first, not try to do it afterward. I got tried to get cute over here and I regretted it. So I will do it the other way this time, but I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we'll think about doing the top pieces. Pretty exciting. safe. Then we'll put the self tappers in. There we go. And then it's just screws down the length of this. Progress report. E-track on the up on the top of the ceiling is mounted. I just need to go back in and put some more self tappers in the second section. I got them in the first one. The holes aren't lining up with the studs. The studs are so narrow, so I'm having to make my own holes. Fortunately, these are self-tappers, so I can, but I'm clearly gonna have to do that right here again. And here also, so I'm gonna have to do it four more times to line it up, then it's finished. It's not perfect. Nothing I do mechanically ever is. You guys gotta remember that mechanical things and building things and renovating trailers, not my forte, not something I'm good at, something I'm learning, something I'm trying to get better at. So I wanna share the good and the bad and the ugly with you guys as I learn to show other people that they can learn and try things and it's okay to make mistakes as you can recover from them. I've made a few today. I sheared ahead off a couple of these things. It's my first time using self tappers. So we're just adjusting as we go, but so far it's looking pretty good and I'm just about done with this phase of the build and I'm excited. So let's get the rest done. All right, friends, well, that was a long, sweaty day, but E-Track on the roof, got my hooks up there, E-Track on the floor for securing coolers and things, E-Track over here, also on the wall, and then much bike securage. This is sturdy. Whole trailer's moving. I could hang from that, I think, pretty easily. Long, sweaty day. Part two of the trailer build is done. Set up for hauling bikes now, everything but wheel chocks, which I haven't decided if I'm going in temporarily without the quick release or what. I gotta think about that. So thanks again to Rocky Mountain ATV for kicking down the supplies for this build. I'll put links to everything I use in the description. Please go check out their website. And uh, if you do end up picking something up, man, I appreciate it when you use my affiliate link because this is my job now and that helps me keep my family fed and, and myself overweight. So thanks for helping me stay fat. But that's it for the trailer build for today. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I thank you. Excellent. Okay. Now to tell Daryl that his drill is slightly less pristine. It's still polyfunctional, just less pristine.